Okay, let's explore this cash budgeting problem. In this problem, we're dealing with the Minden Company. And by the way, if you're watching this on YouTube, um, you may want to adjust uh, the, the size of the screen. Maybe watch it full screen uh, for the numbers to get bigger and uh, more legible for you. Okay, we've got the Minden Company. They're a wholesale distributor of premium European chocolates. And the company's balance sheet is provided right here that you can see. Okay, and they're in the process of preparing a budget for May. And we've got the data that you can see to the left of my mouse, right? Sales are budgeted at 200000 for May. Of these sales, 60000 will be made for cash, and the remainder are credit sales. One half of a month's credit sales are collected in the month the sales are made, and the remainder is collected in the following month. And as of April 30th, accounts receivable will be collected during May. Okay. Uh, item B says the purchase of inventory expected, expected to total 120000 during May. And then there's more specifics on that. We'll get to that in a little bit. Um, they tell us about inventory balance, administrative expenses, notes payable, refrigerating equipment, and they'll also tell you that there's going to be borrowings from the bank by giving a new note payable. All right, let me slide up and show you the requirement now. Or slide down, I guess. I slide down. It for forces the image to appear as if they're moving up. All right, so we're going to prepare a schedule of expected cash collections from scale sales and a schedule of expected cash disbursements for merchandise purchases. That's the first thing we're going to do. Okay, now I've worked that ahead of time just to save some time. So the first thing we, we want to do is bring this to light. Um, we had cash sales and they told us that was $60,000. So if I bring that to light here, that's $60,000. Okay. Uh, the next thing is we've got to figure out what do we have with accounts receivable. Well, we had accounts receivable from May, and that would be calculated as follows. And you may want to look. Uh, I'll hit the F2 so you can see it here, or you can look up here. You take the 200000 the total sales that were budgeted, minus the 60000 of cash sales. Right? They gave us that. Now, that leaves us a balance. 200 minus 60, you can calculate that. And then you multiply it times 50% or divided by 2 because one half of the current month's credit sales are collected in the month of sales. Okay, so my collections are $70,000. But we also need to collect the cash from April, right? We had sales in the month before, and all of that, since 50% is collected uh, in the current month, then the other 50% will be collected in the next month. So all of that 54000 will be collected. Okay, and that's our total cash collection, so I'll bring that to light. Now, the next thing we need to worry about is the inventory purchases. This is note B here. Purchase of inventory expected to be $120,000. they are all made on account, but 40% are paid in the current month. So here's our inventory purchase, and then here's the math. I'll hit the F2 so you can see it again. Again, you can look up here or up here on the insert function bar. You can see the math. 120,000 times 40%, and that's the inventory, the cash that will go out during May for inventory that's purchased in May. But we've got another item, too. We've got the accounts payable. Well, what does accounts payable represent? It's probably the inventory from the prior month. In fact, they tell us that. All of the April 30th accounts payable to suppliers will be paid during May. So we've got to add in that 63,000. And once we do that, we're able to compute what the total cash disbursements are. Okay, so that's the first requirement. Okay, now the next requirement on this, on this particular problem is to put together the cash budget. And I've done that ahead of time, but let's reveal the steps that are involved. You'd start off with the beginning cash balance. We're doing this for the month of May. And so the beginning cash balance is the $9,000. I'll slide this over. Then what you've got to do is add the collections from customers. Well, that's the 184000 that we calculated above, right? And then we've computed uh, just a subtotal, which is total cash available. And from there, we're going to subtract our cash disbursements. Now, our cash disbursements consist of uh, the purchase of inventory, which is 111000 right? Both of those uh, related to the purchase of inventory. 
And then we also had 72,000 of administrative expenses. And they tell you right here, selling and administrative expenses were budgeted at 72,000. Okay, so again, this is a cash budget. This is all about projections, what we think is going, what we think are, uh, the, the, the expenses will be. All right, there's a purchase of equipment that they talk about, 6,500 new refrigerated equipment. We've got to show that cash going out. Now, that's our total cash disbursements, given the information we have. And from there, we can calculate the excess of cash available over disbursements. Right, so cash available, less disbursements, we're 3,500 positive. And then we've got to worry about financing, and they say we're going to borrow $20,000 on a note. They provided that information in note G here. And uh, then we've got a repayment. Okay, now I also want to show the interest that's related to that. If you if you look at this note here, it says the note payable on the April 30th balance sheet will be paid during May with 100 in interest. So we had 14.5 note payable just to the left of my mouse. That's that's the outflow of 14.5 plus the interest payment. So our total financing cost will consist of uh, the payment uh, new increase from borrowings, repayments, and any interest expense. And from there, we're able to generate what we think will be our uh, budgeted ending cash balance, okay? And we just work through the simple pluses and minuses of math to come up with that. Okay, then the next requirement is to put together the budgeted income statement. And again, to save time, I've uh, worked that ahead of time or provided the solutions ahead of time. Well, we knew sales were going to be 200000 They gave us that, right? So then we have to compute cost of goods sold. And the way you compute cost of goods sold, given the information in this problem, is to what I call walk the chain, right? you got to start off with beginning inventory. That's 30000 Then you're going to add your purchases. They told us that was um, 120000 right? There it is, 120000 Now remember, for the budgeted income statement, we're talking about an accrual accounting statement, not a cash statement. That'll give goods available for sale, and then you subtract out your ending inventory. Uh, the May 31st balance is budgeted at 40000 That's where the ending came out. So from there, we can calculate cost of goods sold. When we subtract cost of goods sold from sales, we get gross margin, and then we have to subtract out our selling and administrative expenses. Um, and they told us selling and administrative expenses were 72000 excluding depreciation, and then another 2000 for depreciation. So the 72 plus the 2 is how we come up with the 74000 uh, When we subtract selling and administrative expenses from gross margin, we come up with net operating income that you see there. Uh, and then we knew we had the $100 of interest expense. So we're able to work our way down to 15900 And that's how we put together the budgeted income statement. Okay, next we have to put together the budgeted balance sheet. And the first item we're going to list is cash. It's 8900 Now, we already came up with that from where we did our, our schedule of the cash inflows and outflows, right? We started with the beginning cash balance. We figured what was coming in versus what was going on. And we came up with a projection for our ending cash. That's right here. Okay, so that's how I came up with that 8900 uh, next, we've got to figure out what the account's receivable balance is. Now, let me move this off. So that's out of the way. Um, and they told us that accounts receivable would be equal to credit. Well, well, we, we should know this. A credit sales less whatever was collected. So 200 less 60 is 140. Half are collected in the current month. So 140 divided by 2 gives us 70,000. That's the amount of receivables that we're going to have on our balance sheet. Well, what about inventory? Uh, they told us they budgeted that at 40000 so that becomes uh, an easy one. Building and equipment, net of depreciation is 211500 Okay, now I've listed the logic that we have to use to come up with that. We start off with the beginning building and equipment, which was 207000 then we have to add in what our purchase of, of new equipment was. That's the 6500 that was given in note F. And then there was depreciation of 2000 right? So 207 plus the new additions less the depreciation 
gets us to 11,500. Okay, so we're moving right along here. Um, that gives us our total assets when we add those together. Accounts payable is 72,000. All right, so I put the logic of how you came up with accounts payable. If you look here, they say that 40% of the purchases are paid in the current month. So if we had purchases of inventory of 120,000, then 120,000 times 1 minus the 40%, which is 60%, is what will remain as accounts payable at the end of the month. And that's where the 72,000 comes from. Okay, the note payable, 20,000. Uh, that's the new note we're going to have during the month, so that will be outstanding. Um, common stock, that didn't change. And retained earnings would be equal to the 42.5 plus the net income, less any dividends if we had any. Okay, so I've put the income statement that worked before on the screen so that you can see that we've got 15,900. So if we take the old retained earnings, which is this number here, 42.5 plus the 15.9, that'll get you the 58.4. And there were no dividends. Okay? Let me move that off the screen now. Okay, and now that I've slid that down, uh, you can see all of the balance sheet. In fact, let me move this out of the way. You can see the notes of how we came up with the accounts payable and the buildings and the equipment. Um, and that's how we would put together the budgeted balance sheet. 